more playing nice. Alright, so let's dive into Su Shang. She is a four-star physical hunt character in Honkai Star Rail, and she's gotten the title of being basically a mini Zila in terms of like how many times she's able to attack in one turn and the damage output she's able to provide for the team and to the enemy. So let's really quickly hop over to her light tones. She is a gotcha character. She's not a guaranteed character in the game, so do remember that. Let's start with the five-star. First and foremost, you do have a free 5-star light cone that you are able to obtain in Honkai Star Rail. If you go to the Herda shop, you can superimpose it as well. Increase the wearer's crit by 8% and increase their crit against enemies whose HP is less than or equal to 50% by an additional 8%. So that's 16 crit right there. Whenever you defeat an enemy, your attack also increases by 20% as well. And then you also have 32%. But you'll have to remember that the additional 16% crit is only coming to enemies who are less than or equal to 50%. That's a free 5-star light cone you're able to pick up at the Simulated Universe, talking to her to shop. Highly recommend that if you don't have any of these other alternative options, which we'll get into. Let's hop over the 4-star light cones. Sword play is honestly, in my opinion, probably the best in slot for Su Sheng, if we take a look here at answers of their own, for every time the wearer attacks the same target, damage dealt increases by 8%. Damage dealt. It doesn't specify auto attack, E, or ultimate, just your damage dealt. It stacks up to 5 times, so that's already 40% damage increase for everything at just superimpose 1. It goes up to 80% at superimpose 5. This is a gotcha light cone, so you do have to get lucky on that. Hands down, in my opinion, the best four-star light cone you can throw on her. Some other honorable mentions here. River flows in spring. After entering the battle, increases the wearer's speed by 8% and her damage by 12%. Now, however, whenever the wearer takes damage, the effect will disappear and it will not it will resume after the end of the wearer's next turn. That's what you have to watch out for. So as long as you're providing a shield. In the team comp with Su Shang and making sure she doesn't take damage, you're still benefiting from these two. And I would say that this is still really good to run on her. Now, taking a look at some other four-star light cones here, we have only Silent Remains. But, however, if you take a look at the first line, it says increase the wearer's attack by 16%. 16% attack increase. Personally, you always want to go for damage over attack percent. It does have a condition. If there are two or fewer enemies on the field, increase the wearer's crit by 12%, which is good. Subscribe for more might be a little better because it increases the damage of the wearer's basic attack and skill by 24%. This effect increases another additional 24% whenever the wearer's current energy reaches its max level. So that's an additional 4, that's 24 to 48% damage increase. And that also doubles to 96, somewhere between 48 to 96 if your energy is maxed out. You also have the Battle Pass Light Cone, which is on my top three recommended Light Cone list for Battle Pass users. Increase the Wearer's Crit by 12%, and after a crit hit, a 16% chance to dispel one buff from the target enemy. Those are all the options. I wish I could recommend some of the three-star Light Cones here, but in my opinion, they're all too conditional for me to even want to recommend them. Rivers is your guaranteed four-star Light Cone, so I'd recommend running Rivers, Flows, and Spring, and then Sword Play if you have Sword Play, if you don't have any other options. All right, let's quickly hop over to Traces now for Su Sheng. In terms of like priority on what to upgrade and what I would personally recommend, the alt and the E are basically your bread and butter. So if we're taking a look at the alt here, the ultimate, every time you're popping it, you're doing physical damage equal to 230% of her attack to a single enemy and immediately advancing your action. So for example, if you are attacking with Su Sheng first with like your Q or your E ability, and then you pop your ultimate, you're able to attack again. Basically, three hits at once. This is why she's been pretty much labeled a secret five-star and a mini Zila. Because she's able to attack so many characters in just one turn. 
In addition, her attack will also increase by 21%, and using her skill has two extra chances to trigger Sword Stance for two turns. And we'll get into that in a little bit. Sword Stance basically just triggers, uh, deals more additional damage. I'd probably prioritize either one or the other. Skill or Ultimate, it's up to you. I try and level them both up in her, um, at the same time. And then if we take a look at her skill ability, deals physical damage equal to her attack. In addition, so there's a 33% chance you'll be triggering Sword Stance. Pretty much additional damage that gets applied to the enemy when they have their weakness up. But if the enemy is inflicted with weakness break and they have no white bar above their head, it'll guarantee the trigger. So every time an enemy doesn't have a shield, you 100% want to make sure you are always using your skill ability, your E, to deal out that additional damage. Now afterwards... Talent would be the priority, so this is the third one. Whenever an enemy has their weakness broken on the field, Su Shang's speed will be increased by a certain percentage for two turns. It doesn't even have to be Su Shang that breaks the shield. Anyone can break the shield and she'll still benefit from this. So that is a very good talent as well. And then you have basic attack as your last one that I would prioritize upgrading in terms of her traces now let's quickly talk about the bonus abilities this is the first bonus ability that you're able to power up i would recommend holding off on that because it's extremely bad in my opinion it basically says whenever you're lower than 50 percent reduce the chances of being attacked you should stay alive anyways if you have a shield character regardless this one repost is the best one in my opinion to level up first because it says for every sword stance triggered the damage dealt by sword stance will increase by two percent which can stack up to 10 times so that's 20 percent extra damage for the sword stance and you're able to get that once you hit trailblaze level 40 and ascend your character to 60 then you're able to unlock this bonus ability that's the first bonus ability i'd work on Vanquisher would be the second one in line after using basic attack or skill. If there are enemies on the field with weakness break, her action is advanced by 15%. You're going to be breaking characters quite often in this game. Just more action, more turns, more damage. This is a good bonus ability to get. And then I'd focus on this one as like the last one if you do want to end up getting that. Because there's like some slight attack increase you get. So that's the order that I would go with for the traces. It's one of the reasons why I haven't gotten this yet, and this will be my first one that I end up getting once we farm these. All right, let's quickly hop over to the relics here. Of course, the best in slot for her would be the Champion of Streetwise Boxing. It is the physical set in Honkai Star Rail. Two-piece increases your damage by 10%, and after the rare attacks or is hit, their attack increases by 5% for the rest of the battle. That's what you like to see. It's not turn-based. It's for the entire fight. That effect can stack up to five times if I can move my slime out of the way so I can actually show you. Five times for stacking, 25% more attack for the entire fight for just getting hit or doing damage, which you will be able to dish out a quite a bit of damage with Su Shang quite early on. So I would recommend the four piece if you can. If you can't go four piece set for physical, I'd recommend at the very least run a two piece physical and then a two piece attack percent. So the musketeer set if you need to, but ideally you would like to run the four piece physical set on Su Shang. If we're quickly moving over to the other stuff, the sphere and the rope, I would recommend the inert salsado. It increases your crit by 8%. And whenever your crit reaches 50%, your ultimate or follow-up, you're not going to be doing any follow-ups with Su Shang, but your ultimate damage will be increased by another 15%. Very good two-piece set here. Might not benefit the most from it early game because you might not be able to build that much crit, but this will definitely be probably the best relic set for the sphere and the rope for su shang in my opinion all right so for the main stats here head piece is always going to be hp attack percent for the gloves body either crit or crit damage and you're going to be inter you're going to be changing these out as you start farming relics depending on the substats and if you ended up getting more crit or more crit damage it'll it'll change depending on what you need right now i'm currently running crit rate but if i somehow get an artifact and relics that roll nothing but like crit rate and i get like 16 percent here or 16 percent there and i have too much crit then i'll swap this out for crit damage so crit rate or crit damage for the body just go as you you start building and see what kind of stat you end up needing for that for the boots i would recommend either speed or attack currently i'm running attack but speed is also great and for the main stat here we're gonna go physical damage 
because that is pretty much what she does and for this we're going to go attack percent as well so the main reason why i'm running attack percent here and not like something like energy recharge you're going to have support characters on your team regardless ting yun is a very good support character that you can do which provides 50 energy for any of your allies that you choose with her on your team which is a perfect team comp for her you should be able to get by just running attack percent on this and let ting yun provide you energy for your su to get her ultimate back now if we're going to quickly run over to substats here substats i would recommend are obviously going to be crit and crit damage is the top two priorities speed for the last one and probably attack so attack percent here if we were able to get it yes those are the substats i would recommend across the board if you're not able to get attack of course crit damage crit rate speed and then maybe like effect resist or break effect one of those break effect above effect resist all right let's finish it off with the Adelons here for su shang every one of them are really good so e1 after an enemy is weakness broken and you're using your e ability you're also regenerating one skill point back it's basically a free e on any enemy that's weakness broken 100 percent value there number two after triggering sword stance the damage taken by su shang is reduced by 20 percent number four increases her break effect by 40 percent so we're going to do a little bit more chunky damage as she breaks the enemy if she is the one to actually break the enemy and then e6 her talent speed boost is now stackable and can stack up to two times also after entering battle she'll immediately gain one stack of her talent speed boost so if you guys don't remember that's basically whenever an enemy has a weakness broken on the field her speed increases by 16 percent for two turns you're able to stack that now to 32 percent and you're already starting to fight off with more speed 16 percent for just starting the fight that's it so all of her Adelons are really good in my opinion and that is su shang in a nutshell yes she's a four star character yes she's a phenomenal hunt character I'd 100% recommend trying to get her and level her up and invest in her if you can and if you were lucky enough to end up uh, winning the gotcha for her. That pretty much wraps up the entire build showcasing of Su Shang and the stuff that I recommend for her. If you found this video helpful or informative, do please let me know down below. If you guys want to join us over on Twitch, we're live every day answering all types of questions. Feel free to join us and ask anything. Let me know what you guys want to see next and who you want to see next. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.